Count down to state of war. The BJP's big Karnataka churn. At least eight MPs to be dropped by the BJP. Big faces axed, youngsters to be picked. Ticket suspense peaks. Who's in? Who's out? The big focus on 6 p.m. Prime. Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita and the Gopal. And this evening, we're getting you all the updates coming in on the second candidate list from both the BJP and the Congress. Inside information tells us that as far as Karnataka goes for the BJP, you're going to see big, big changes as several top MPs, several big faces are going to be dropped. Youngsters, first-timers are going to be chosen instead. The Congress's list is expected any moment now. So we'll be getting you all the updates on that. First, a quick check of the headlines. Nayab Seni takes charge as the new Haryana Chief Minister. Five Mantris also take oath for JJP MLA's attend ceremony. BJP government stays safe even without JJP numbers. Congress to announce their second list soon. Big bigs to skip the 2024 battle. Sources say former Chief Ministers Ashok Gehloth, Kamal Nath and Sachin Pilot not keen on contesting polls. Big political meltdown over CAA rollout. Mamta Banerjee called CAA divisive. Opposition CM says they want to enforce CAA in their states. India booms at the Bharat Shakti exercise in Pokhran. Prime Minister Modi watches live war drills at India's nuclear site. A big Atmanirbhar defense boost for India. Unfortunate news so of the first ever Tejas crash. IAF's light combat aircraft crashes near Jaisalmer during operational trainee sortie. Pilot ejects out safely. Court of inquiry ordered. And cricketer Rishabh Pant to make a comeback in the IPL a year after life-threatening car crash to play first Delhi Punjab clash. And any time now, the Congress is going to be holding a briefing and coming out with their second list of candidates for the upcoming elections. And here's what we're picking up, that there are several big wigs who are not going to be finding their names featured in this particular list that comes out, particularly in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Now, there was a lot of buzz that, like the BJP, the Congress too could go ahead and field some of their biggest faces in a Lok Sabha election. But what we're hearing is that Ashok Gehloth Kamal Nath aren't going to feature in this list. The former chief ministers will not be a part of this list because reportedly they've expressed to the high command that they don't want to fight in this election. Sachin Pilot also may not contest in the general election. So that does come as a setback for the Congress because these are your biggest faces, none of whom will be a part of this list. Moshmi is joining us with more details on this. Anytime now, Moshmi, we're expecting an announcement from the Congress High Command. Uh, there are a lot of questions really on why some of the biggest faces will not be a part of the general election fight. Is it because the likes of Ashok Gehloth and Kamal Nath said and conveyed to the High Command that they don't want to fight or was it a decision taken by the Congress leadership? likely that the decision that the big wigs uh, shouldn't fight uh, is a decision that the leadership would like to take but uh, you know the uh, broader perspective could be that these leaders could help fight in multiple Lok Sabha constituencies but importantly the second list would underline uh, whether the Congress is going full throttle as far as you know uh, putting its uh, putting up its big faces are concerned uh, mm -hmm. because uh, remember Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Assam, Gujarat uh, these are the states and Uttarakhand these are the states that have been uh, discussed as far as the 
second uh, Congress uh, Central Election Committee meeting is concerned and four chief ministers, former chief ministers, one deputy chief minister, uh, their names uh, have not featured in the uh, in the discussion and that that means that Ashok Gehlot, Kamal Nath, Digvijay Singh, Harish Rata, Ra Rawat, all these four ch uh, former chief ministers don't seem to be keen on contesting the Lok Sabha polls. Uh, remember in 2019, Rahul Gandhi's diktat was that all the political bigwigs uh, should uh, challenge the ideology of uh, B the BJP, challenge mm -hmm. uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and therefore uh, it was a matter of great contention that any leader who did said that they didn't want to fight was taken against the diktat of the party high command. But this time round that diktat seems to be missing and uh, uh, e even after the first list had the face of uh, name of Bhupesh Baghel, a former chief minister from Chhattisgarh. Uh, the second list could be found wanting on those big big names, perhaps two sons, Webhav Gelot from Jalor and Nakul Nath being repeated from Chindwara is what uh, we could see in that list. Going to keep coming across to you for those updates in just a few moments from me. Yeah, Moshmi, go ahead. Akshita, it's just about to start. It's just okay. about to start and my cameraman will just turn at 360 degrees, uh, Deepak. And you can see KC Venu Gopal and Ajay Makan uh, seated with uh, Pawan Khera right there. And uh, the second list is going to be released. Press conference about to begin. So we'll just stay on these images live. You can see they're seated right in the center is KC Venu Gopal flanked by Ajay Makan and Pawan Khera. The announcement expected any time now. On the second candidate list, let's cut across life. Gopal ji and Ajay Makan ji had our Lok Sabha Umidwaron's first Pehli Suchi Jari ki thi. Usi silsile mein aaj silsile ko aage badate hue Shri Venu Gopal ji aur Shri Ajay Makan ji aapke samne hain. Dusri Suchi Jari karne. Venu Gopal ji. Good evening to everybody. So far, we are already announced our first list of candidates. Today we are going to announce the second list of candidates. Yesterday, CEC met and cleared the list of around 43 names in respect of Assam, state like Assam, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, From these four states, we are releasing 43 names today, 43 names today. Basically, we know that actually the Congress is fighting this election for poor. Basically, this election of 2024 is poor versus rich. So far, we announced the guarantees. From the guarantee itself, it is very clear that we are trying to address the issue of farmers. We are very much concerned about the issue of youth in this country, unemployment issue. We are very much concerned about the social justice of this country. Today, I think Honorable Congress President and Rahul Gandhi ji have announced Adivasi Sangal. So this fight is very clear. As far as Congress party is concerned, this fight is very clear. On one side, entire rich people and their interest is standing by BJP. On the other side, Congress is fighting for the poor people. This, the same way we fought election in Karnataka, same way we fought election in Telangana, we already clearly demonstrated our vision in the both of the states. We have delivered in Karnataka whatever we promised to the people of Karnataka. We have delivered in Telangana whatever we promised the people of Telangana. Now we are giving a promise to people of India that when we are going to come back in power, we will do very proactive steps and actions in favor of poor people of this country. The other side only they are only talking about the divisive agendas. 
they want to divert the entire attention of the common man through these agendas. That is what we are witnessing every day, day by day, one after one, announcement is coming to divide the people, spread the violence among the people, spread the haters among the people. So our agenda is very clear. Our agenda is people's agenda. Our agenda is poor people's agenda. So that is why we are sticking on these guarantees. Our candidate selection also certainly reflecting on these agendas. So, so far, we are going to that path. With this word, now I am going to announce the candidates which had been cleared by the Central Election Committee of the Congress Party. Assam, Kokrajar Resti, Gajan Mashari, Assam, Dubri, Rakhibil Hussain, Assam, Barpeta, Di Bayan. Azam Darang Udalguri, Madhav Rajbanshi, Azam Gahoti, Srimadhi Meera Barthukar Goswami, Azam Dibhu Joyram Engling, Azam Karim Ganj, Hafiz Rashid Ahmad Chaudhari, Azam Sirchar Surjaya Khan Sarkar, Azam Nagon, Pratyut Bardoli, Azam Kazaringa, Srimadi Rosirina, Turkey, Azam Sonipur, Premlal Ganchu, Azam Jorhat, Gaurav Gogoi, then Gujarat Kach, Nishibai Lalan, Gujarat Benskantha, Mrs. Jenny Ben Thakur, Gujarat Ahmadabad East, Rohan Gupta, Gujarat Ahmadabad West, Bharat Makwana, Gujarat Porbandar, Ladit Bai Vaswai, Gujarat Bardoli East, Sitar Chaudhari, Gujarat Walsad, Anand Bai Patel, Madhya Pradesh, Binth, Fool Singh Bararia, Tikamgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Pangaj Agarwar, Madhya Pradesh Satna, Siddhar Kuswaha, Madhya Pradesh Siddhi, Kamalishwar Patel, Madhya Pradesh Mandala Esti, Omkar Singh Markham, Madhya Pradesh Chindwara, Nagul Nath, Madhya Pradesh Devas, Rajendra Malavya, Madhya Pradesh Dar, Radeshya Mawal, Madhya Pradesh Gargon, Porlal Khathe, Madhya Pradesh Bethul, Ramu Thekam, then Rajasthan Bikanar, Govindram Meghwal, Rajasthan Churu, Rahul Kaswal, Rajasthan Junchunu, Brijendar Ola, Rajasthan Alwar, Lalit Yadav, Rajasthan Bharatpur, Mrs. Sanjana Jadav, Rajasthan Tong Sabai Madhapur, Arshchandra Mena, Jodhpur, Rajasthan, Karan Singh, Uchiyada, Rajasthan, Jalur, Vaibhav Gaurot, Rajasthan, Uthaipur, Tarachan Meena, Rajasthan, Chitogar, Udaira Lanchana, Uttaragand, Tehri Jahar, Garwal, Jodh Singh, Gunsola, Uttaragan Garwal, Ganesh Gondial, Uttaragan Almora, Pradeep Tamtha, Daman Diyu, Kedan Dehyabai Patel. In this list, there are general candidates out of this 43 is 10, OBC is 13. Scheduled caste already 10, Scheduled tribe 9, Muslim 1. That is out of 43, 33 belongs to SC, ST, OBC and minority. Age below 50 is 25. 
एज बिटवीन फिफ्टी वन सिक्सटी इज एट बिटवीन वन सिक्सटी वन एंड सेवेंटी टू टेन दिस इज द ब्रेकअप ऑफ द एज आई थिंक दिस इज द सेकेंड लिस्ट ऑल्सो क्लियरली रिफ्लेक्टिंग आवर आइडिया दर इज सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट सेवन परसेंटेज इज एस सी एस टी ओ बी सी माइनॉरिटी सेवेंटी सिक्स पॉइंट सेवन परसेंटेज इज अगेन बिलो सिक्सटी ईयर्स दो यंग एंड सोशल जस्टिस एंश्योर्ड लिस्ट वी आर प्रसेंडिंग टूडे ओके थैंक यू बहुत ही संक्षिप्त में वेणुगोपाल जी ने कहा है जो उसको दोहराना चाहूंगा हम लोगों ने आज तिरतालीस कैंडिडेट्स की घोषणा करी है जिसमें असम से बारह गुजरात से सात मध्य प्रदेश से दस राजस्थान से दस उत्तराखंड से तीन और दमन एंड दीव से एक कैंडिडेट की घोषणा करी है तो कुल तिरतालीस कैंडिडेट्स हैं इसकी मुख्य विशेषता ये है कि इसके अंदर 76.7 परसेंट छिहत्तर दशमलव सात परसेंट एस सी एस टी और ओबीसी इसके अंदर लिस्ट में है और युवाओं की अगर बात करें कम उम्र के लोगों की अगर बात करें तो इतने ही छिहत्तर दशमलव सात परसेंट यानी तिरतालीस में से 33 लोग 60 वर्ष से कम हैं तो ये इस लिस्ट की विशेषता है और हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि ये अच्छे कैंडिडेट्स हैं जिनको जनता चुन करके भेजेगी कि कांग्रेस के द्वारा दी जा रही गारंटीज को संकल्प को पूरा करने के लिए ये सभी लोग लोकसभा में जाकर के कांग्रेस पार्टी के सोच को कांग्रेस पार्टी की विचारधारा को मजबूत करें धन्यवाद थैंक यू All right. So the second list is out from the Congress. Forty-three names mentioned there, but the big takeaways are from Assam. You've got Gorov Gogoi from Jorhat. He's been uh, campaigning hard to get that seat. He's received it from the High Command. Nakul Nath from Chindwara. You've got, uh, in fact, uh, several others also. You've got Vaibhav Gelot from Jalor. But the big takeaway is also what we reported here earlier on India Today. The likes of Kamal Nath, Ashok Gelot, Sachin Pilot, none of them featuring in this list after they communicated to the High Command that they're not willing to fight this upcoming election. There are turncoats like Rahul Kaswan who only recently joined the Congress who have also been given a ticket. He's fighting from Churi, a sitting MP there. So you've got, in fact, several big takeaways. The big names, as far as Ashok Gehlot, Kamal Nath are concerned, they're not in the fray. But their sons most definitely are. Nakul Nath very much getting a ticket from Chindwara. It's a stronghold of the family, so that was expected. Web of Gehlot also getting a ticket from Jalor. Uh, Sachin Pilot not being named in the list. This because he reportedly conveyed to the High Command that he doesn't want to fight in this election. Gaurav Gogoi has been chosen from the Jorhat seat as he had wanted. He was campaigning hard to get this particular seat and he's got it from his father's turf. He's been given Jorhat hard to take the legacy forward essentially these are the big names that are emerging from the second list of 43 names that the congress has put out now uh, what really will this mean you've got essentially several states that have been covered by the congress they've covered assam gujarat madhya pradesh rajasthan as well as damandiu and while you don't have any of the veterans per se in the poll battle there's no doubt that all of their sons some of them who are already accomplished politicians who've proven their mettle who've proven their worth in these seats have been given a ticket yet again web of gelot has been given a ticket from jalor you have nakul nath from chindwara that really wasn't a big surprise gorov kogoy who's been campaigning for jorhat has been given that particular ticket uh, so india today of course had reported for you that kamal nath uh, sachin pilot None of them are going to be in the free Ashok Gehlot as well. And that's very, very clear. That's been confirmed also in this Congress presser where you've got several of their family members, but none of the veterans really fighting in this election. Moshmi is joining us with more details on this. Moshmi, the information that you were giving us earlier has turned out as proved to be correct yet again. Uh, you've not got Kamal Nath, Sachin Pilot, Ashok Gehlot, none of them, but Vaibhuf Gehlot is very much there in the list. Nakul Nath very much there in the list. Gaurav Gogoi also finds a mention. No surprises per se. 
Absolutely, Akshita. Uh, we had reported this yesterday that uh, many big names will be giving the Lok Sabha contest a miss. And uh, there you are, you know, the Congress focusing on the fact that uh, the SC, ST minority in OBC uh, combination is more than 74%. And that is our uh, key promise of social justice. Also about, you know, giving the youth a chance, the women a chance, uh, which uh, is also a key focus in these uh, lists of candidates of uh, 43 candidates uh, clearly you know uh, there are some names uh, some some constituencies that have been uh, withheld like I told you that Harish Rawat was not keen on contesting from Haridwar uh, that seat uh, the, the name has not been the candidate has not been finalized despite discussion uh, Jodhpur which is the home turf of Ashok Gehlot we don't have a candidate yet from Jodhpur um, importantly in Madhya Pradesh uh, uh, if you see, the Rajgarh is the area where uh, Digvijay Singh bears a lot of clout. And uh, uh, if you look at the entire list, it, it, it talks about uh, various candidates who are with the party, winnability and loyalty as the key focus. But the question really is that why are the big faces not contesting the elections? Is it a lack of confidence? Is it a party strategy to, in fact, you know, uh, tell them to focus on more constituencies? Such a pilot, as, uh, for, for one, I know, uh, sources told me that he's taken uh, this onus on him, that he'll take care okay. of four constituencies in his area in Rajasthan. Uh, he has promised that he'll be campaigning for them. And also... So he's willing to uh, campaign. campaign. He's saying that I will ensure a win of four seats. But why isn't he in the poll fray himself? That will be a question that's obviously asked. Imagine that you have this kind of a candidate list and then you threw in veterans names as well. That's a message that the Congress is willing to take the fight to the BJP. The Bharatiya Janata Party has always adopted the strategy of throwing their veterans into the poll battle, into the upcoming elections, whether it's General Assembly, and then shift them over. As far as the Congress is concerned, it looks like the veterans have put their foot down and said we're not willing to contest this particular election, which is why their names are not really in the second list. Thanks very much, Moshmi, for joining us with all of those updates from Ground Zero. We'll continue getting you all the reactions so on the second list from the Congress that's out. 43 names that have been put out right now by the Congress. We just played out for you the list, of the candidate list released by the Congress, the second candidate list. What about the BJP? They held their huddle just last evening and in the second list, the focus largely is on the state of Karnataka. Former Karnataka Chief Minister Baswaraj Bomai will be contesting the upcoming elections reportedly from the Haveri Gadag constituency. The BJP Central Election Committee held its second meet to decide on the party's candidates for the Lok Sabha elections and the biggest talking point is Karnataka because there are a number of names who are going to be dropped. Several sitting MPs reportedly will be axed from the BJP list. Anand Kumar Hegde, GMC Siddeshwara, you've got Pratap Simha, who's the Mysuru MP, Nalin Kumar Katil, among others. Remember, Anand Kumar Hegde being dropped is a big headline because he was also issued a show cause notice by the BJP over a recent comment that he made about changing the constitution. And the BJP made it clear that they have no tolerance for such comments. Now, suspense also looms over tickets to certain BJP bigwigs like Menaka Gandhi, Varun Gandhi, VK Singh. Hans Raj Hans. Nitin Gadkari in all likelihood will get a ticket from Maharashtra, but there's still a question mark on when that announcement will be made. So focusing on Karnataka, two names, as I mentioned, Pratap Simha, Nalin Kumar Katil and Anand Kumar Hegde, three names that in all likelihood will be asked this time. Let's get you some of their reactions on what they had to say about all of these reports doing the wrongs. Wandu Vele, Yuvaraja to Maharaja. Yeduvir or get ticket Kodo do Nijave Aitun Tandre Kandita Adananano Swagatistene Paksada Bakare Kartanagi Nanu Kuda or get Kelson Martini Yakin and Swagatistene or get Kelson Martin in Tandre Nanige Our Bakin and Heman Sutayakendre Aramani Havani and Trita Quaterdi Rajanagi Yuva Badalo Praja Prabhuta Sardamanu Nalvati Elder Lebandide, Hagagi Raja Matu Prajagala Madidali, Vetya Sela, Nanu Prajagala Riti Lebaduktini, Anta Bandaga, Adana Swagatsle Bekavite. Party are Astriya Nakuru Yala Yochanakarana Madikum, 
ಆಯ್ಕೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾರೆ ಸಹಜ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾನು ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ನಮ್ಮದು ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಪರಿಕಲ್ಪನೆಗಳೇನು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ನಿರಂತರವಾಗಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ನಿಂತ ನೀರಾಗಬಾರ್ದು ಹೊಸೊಬ್ಬರು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರಬೇಕು ಚಲಾವಣೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ರಾಷ್ಟ್ರೀಯ ನಾಯಕರ ಯೋಚನೆಗೆ ಬದ್ಧರಾಗಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋರು ನಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಏನು ಹೇಳುತ್ತೋ ಆ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋರು ಗುಡಿಸಿ ಹೇಳೋರು ಗುಡಿಸೋರು ಒಡಿಸ ಒಡಿಸೋರು ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಇರೋರು ನಾವು So there are about 8 MPs in Karnataka who could be dropped by the BJP and let's just pull out some of the highlights of some of the big names essentially from Karnataka who are not going to be getting a ticket this time around. What we're hearing is Anand Kumar Hegde who's represented Uttra Kannada. He won't be getting a ticket. Why? Because of his controversial comments on the constitution which the BJP has reprimanded him publicly over even issuing him a show cause notice. Then you have Nalim Kumar Katil who is the member of parliament Dakshina Kannada. He is someone who was also the BJP chief in Karnataka and that's why it could be axed because of his non-performance and the poll loss that the BJP suffered under his leadership. Pratap Simha from Mysuru, while there's a big social media campaign to continue him as the member of parliament to give him a ticket, the reality is that he may be dropped because the party may actually fail to Mysuru Royal. In the, uh, uh, in the district. So we'll see whether that actually happens. I want to bring in Nagarjun Dwarkanath, who's joining us live from Bengaluru with more on this. Nagarjun, several names doing the rounds, and many of these are big party faces. Some of the faces of Karnataka BJP, veterans who are all set to be ditched by the party this time. Well, that is to the big names, like you mentioned, Akshita Anand Kumar Hekte, who's been a former MOS as well in Skill Development Ministry, and Pratap Simma, who's been a two-time MP, and uh, Mr. Nalil Kumar Katil, who worked as a state BJP chief. The reasons being separate, separate as well for anti-constitution remarks and making the party uncomfortable and putting the party in an embarrassing situation, Anand Kumar Hekte is being dropped. While Katil uh, is that the leadership is lacking when he was four-year BJP president and he was not good with the Karyakartas and he also had a terrible loss in the assembly election under his leadership. That's the reason. But Pratap Simma is the biggest surprise, except for the negative uh, uh, publicity or the negative campaign that happened during the past issue of the parliament attack. Apart from that, Pratap, Pratap Simma has not been in uh, controversy over the last 10 years. But the state unit, as we are told by our sources, doesn't want Pratap Simha to continue and they want to put, field a, a royal monarch or the king of Mysore, Mr. Yaduvir, in that seat. All right, Nagarjun, thanks very much for joining us with those details. Expected really that there will be an announcement by the BJP either later tonight or tomorrow on exactly what the second candidate list of the BJP looks like. And like I said, there'll be a lot of focus on Karnataka. Meanwhile, the BJP continues, Alliance Shopping continues to ensure that the NDA fold is growing. In Andhra Pradesh, official now that it's a Jagan Jagannot versus the Mahagad Bandhan of BJP, TDP and Janasena. They've finalized their seat sharing pact on Monday. 17 seats for the TDP. You've got six for the BJP and two for Janasena in the upcoming general elections. 48 hours after the TDP and Janasena announced that they were joining the NDA, a seat sharing formula for Andhra Pradesh has now been finalized. The announcement was made after a late night meeting at Chandra Babu Naidu's residence, Undavali in Hyderabad. The BJP will fight six Lok Sabha seats in the upcoming election in Andhra. The TDP will contest 17 and Pawan Kalyan's Janasena too. In the assembly election, the BJP will fight on 10 seats, the TDP on 144 and Janasena will contest on 21. Will the NDA be able to stop the Jagan Jagannot in Andhra Pradesh? Chandra Babu Naidu declared that the alliance will pave the way for a brighter future. Of course, uh, this alliance has been there earlier as well, uh, but now we are kind of uh, striking the umbilical cord again. And uh, already the seats uh, discussion has been happening, and once there is a, a, a definite uh, uh, res resolve on which seats does BJP get or which seats does the, do the other two parties get, I think we'll start a campaigning together and we are sure that we will be able to uh, form the government. While there's been no reaction from YSRCP chief and Andhra chief minister Jagan Reddy on the realignment, his sister and Congress leader YS Sharmila hit out at Chandra Babu Naidu. While Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu had aligned himself with the BJP party in 2000, uh, for the 2014 election, he cursed the BJP party in 2019 and came out of the alliance. While in 2014 he said he is allying with the BJP party for the special status of Andhra Pradesh. 
After he became the chief minister, he changed his words and said there is nothing in the special status. He is going again back to the same BJP party that he cursed in 2019. The Andhra Alliance is the latest in a series of tie-ups that the BJP is forging to accomplish its char so power target. In Odisha, talks with the BJD are said to be in their final stages. Talks are also on with the Akali Dal in Punjab. And in Tamil Nadu, TTV Dinakaran's AMMK has offered unconditional support to the BJP. In the war of alliances, the NDA has a clear lead for now, even as the India alliance continues to be fraught with differences. With Abdul Bashir in Hyderabad Bureau Report, India Today. We're cutting across to breaking news coming in. The State Bank of India has submitted the electoral donor details to the Election Commission. So all details have now been submitted to the Election Commission. The EC is expected to go ahead and publish the data by Friday. It looks like the SBI has gone ahead and met with the deadline because remember the Supreme Court said that by 5 p.m. this evening they are to hand over all the details, the data that they have in two separate lists to the Election Commission. Nalini Sharma is joining us with more details on this. Nalini, the SBI adhering to the deadline, considering that the Supreme Court made it very clear that if they didn't, it would attract contempt proceedings this time. Yes, Akshita, in fact, very clearly it was told to the State Bank of India that all data needs to be submitted by the end of the business working day today. And right now, our colleague Sanjay Sharma has confirmed from Election Commission sources that the ECI has received all of the data pertaining to the electoral bonds from the State Bank of India. But there are a few important riders that we must clarify. What the sources within the Election Commission are telling us is that the entire data has been provided in completely raw format to the Election Commission of India and that it might be a challenge even for the Election Commission to go ahead and comply with the Supreme Court orders and publish the entire information on its website by the 15th of March. 15th of March was the deadline that was given to the Election Commission to ensure that all of the data that is being supplied by the SBI is published on the ECI website. But what sources, very important, Akshita, we are telling, uh, what the sources are telling us is that it might be a challenge because the data is in raw format, so it remains to be seen as to whether or not the ECI can comply with the Supreme Court verdict that was passed yesterday and published the data by the 15th of March or not. So completely raw, which means that it's not segregated the way the Supreme Court wanted it to be, but the Election Commission has a deadline to meet of Friday 5 p.m. Will they move the Supreme Court seeking more time in lieu of how they've been given the data? We'll see what really happens. Thanks very much, Nalini, for joining us. With the CEA becoming a reality now, let's get you a sense of how refugees and migrants are celebrating. This particular report comes from Bengal, where Hindu migrants are celebrating the notification of CAA amid tears of joy. Some of these migrants also recounted to us the horrors they faced in Bangladesh. As the Modi government rolled out the Citizenship Amendment Act notification on Monday, Jubilation filled the air among the Matua refugees of West Bengal. Celebrations erupted in West Bengal, Siliguri and other parts of the state as well. Escaping persecution in Bangladesh, the Matua community belongs to the Hindu scheduled caste settled primarily in North and South 24 Parganas district of Bengal. Amidst joy, some migrants recounted horrors faced in Bangladesh. আমাদের ওই রাইফেল দিয়ে যখন গুলিগুলো দেয় আমাদের কানের কাছ থেকে যায় সেই দৃশ্যের কথা আমরা কোনোদিনও ভুলতে পারব না কানের কাছ থেকে যাচ্ছে আমার দাদারা মারা in the current electoral landscape of West Bengal, the Matua community holds significant political influence. 
with a population of around 30 lakh they represent the second largest scheduled caste population in the state and are capable of impacting at least five lok sabha seats this has made them a prime target for political parties like the bjp trinamool and the left front abhi ghabra gaye hain mamta banerji ne ghabra gaye hain suniye कि सीए होने के बाद पूरे उद्वास्तु समाज जो इधर है कम से कम डेढ़ से दो करोड़ के आसपास वो लोगों का वोट भारतीय जनता पार्टी में जाने वाला है आप कौन होते हैं लागू देने के लागू होने उन्हें देने या नहीं देने के लिए ये तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट का इशू है राज्य सरकार का थोड़ी इशू है मुख्यमंत्री हो तो क्या हुआ प्रधान प्रधानमंत्री हो गए नीति जो स्वच्छ हो तो मथुआ देर आधार कार्ड काटते गए क्यों और फॉर्म एक जगह बोला बाबा बार्थ सार्टिफिकेट नहीं आसते हैं While for those who've long struggled without a country to call their own, the CAA represents a beacon of hope. It will lead to political wrangling within the state of West Bengal ahead of the Lok Sabha election. Today, after many years, for some maybe 50 years, for some maybe 75 years. they have received what they had been asking for all these years that is a document which classifies them as an indian national as a citizen of india with camera person tapas berry this is surya agni roy for india today thakur nagar north chobis bagana All right, with that, I'm wrapping up this edition of 6 p.m. Prime. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'm leaving you, however, with highlights of the Prime Minister's visit to Pokhran, where he witnessed the Tri Services live fire and maneuver exercise in Pokhran. आज भारत डिफेंस सेक्टर में भी एक बड़ा निर्यातक बनता जा रहा है जिन हथियारों का वो इस्तेमाल कर रही है वो उनके अपने हैं वो कभी भी कम नहीं पड़ेंगे तो सेनाओं की ऊर्जा